The visit to the West Indies in 1976 brought no respite from the fast bowling barrage, far from it. The West Indies attack was led by Andy Roberts and Michael Holding, and they had the massive Wayne Daniel in support. It required batting of the most courageous kind. One particular spell at Old Trafford on the Saturday evening came in for savage condemnation as John Edrich and Brian Close were subjected to bouncer after bouncer. In that particular match, England failed to score 200 runs in all, with extras the main contributor to their match aggregate. When the sides assembled at the Oval for the last test, England were 2 0 down. It was probably the greatest feat of fast bowling I've ever seen from Michael Holding, who bowled super quick on a perfect batting wicket. And um, there was, he got 14 wickets in the match. And also, the comeback of Dennis Amis with his new style helmet or motorbike helmet it really was in those days and um, he hadn't played in the series and yet he'd got a hundred in the test trial before the series started and he wasn't selected for the series and here he was coming in at the oval fifth test match against this formidable pace attack and with a new style of playing shuffling across his stumps and working the onside getting that side of the ball all the time Amos started his marathon on the evening of the second day. His opening partner, Bob Woolmer, went early the following morning, leg before to holding, the first of his eight victims in the innings. David Steele was the only top-order English batsman to have scored a century in the series, and batting with Amos for the first significant length of time found a partner beset by doubts. When I got to him, he was about 60 or not out, and of course he was going through his fourth theory of about five years. You know, he was doing this quick, quick step business this back foot across and you know shuffle and then in and, and anything around about middle and leg he was flipping it through mid wicket like a bullet you know he said no uh, how do you think i'm doing i said doing i said you're 75 on the board i said well never mind about you what about me right how am i doing well you were you were you cars you are me i said i'm 20 right and i'm fighting here willie provided amos with additional support and the hundred came in appropriate fashion with a four off holding Julian's given up the chase, it goes through for four. And a tremendous comeback this by Dennis Amos. Recall to this England side, one or two people having serious misgivings about his ability to deal with the pace. He's answered him in the best possible fashion. Short again. And that's through for four more. It's a good, firm, straight drive, and this really has been a fine exhibition by Amis. Uh, that's through the offside for four. Cracked away off the back foot. And that boundary to Amis brings up the 300. Monday morning saw Amis to his double century. And that also is four, and it's his double hundred. It was over Greenwich's head. Dennis Amos goes to 203. But then he shuffled across once too often to Michael Holding. And as Bolden has gone over too far, he's left the leg stump wide open. And Dennis Amos out for 203. The man to strike again, Michael Holding. If I can put it like this, if anybody gave a V sign to the, to the selectors, Dennis Amos did on that occasion. I can't recall a, a greater comeback type innings um, throughout my, my career, and, um, and it was a, a great achievement. Amos's double hundred wasn't enough to save England, and with 80 minutes to spare on the final day, Holding fittingly took the final wicket to become the first West Indian to take more than 12 wickets in a test match.